So there are some commanders out there that are so incredibly deadly or can do some incredibly broken things so quickly that you must take them out right away. So on this episode, I'm going to be talking about some new commanders that you must kill on site. Now, really quick, I actually had a previous episode where I talked about kill on site commanders. So when I say new commanders, I mean the new ones since then. And I think that was actually right after Kaldheim came out, I believe. So the end of January of last year. So that's what I mean when I say new. And I do want to note that obviously this is not an all-encompassing list, just as the previous one isn't, because there are an absurd amount of commanders that have even just come out in the past year or so. That being said, I'm going to highlight some of the top ones here, so let's get into it. First up, how about Myrim Sentinel Worm? And my apologies if I mispronounce any of the names. Anyways, I'm going with my rim. My rim is a 6-6 Dragon's Spear with Flying and Ward 2 that costs 3 green, blue, red. It says, whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a token that's a copy of it, except the token isn't legendary if that dragon is legendary. So this is an absurd commander that protects itself, and it really didn't need to have that text on it with that Ward 2 to actually be an absurd commander. And copying every single of your dragons is one thing, but there are certain limitations that this doesn't have. Obviously, I mean, it's just written on the card. The token is a legendary, the dragon is legendary, so now you can copy your legendary dragons, which of course is bonkers, especially since this does not specify that the dragon had to be cast if it's entering the battlefield. We do see that stipulation on a lot of powerful triggers, but this isn't one of them. So this is just, hey, any big bad dragon comes into play if it's non-token, cool, you get a second copy of it, no matter if it's a legendary creature or not. And then, of course, since that token is not legendary, well, there are other ways, plenty of other ways in these colors to make more and more token copies of that token to just make an absurd amount of non-legendary legendary dragons, if you know what I mean. Now, when it comes to an actual non-legendary dragon like Scourge of Valkus, just think about how absurd that can get. It's a 4-4 that has whenever it and another dragon enters the battlefield on your control deals X damage any target X the number of dragons you control. So get this in play, get a second copy of it, get both of their triggers, get more dragons in play, which then get even more copies, which get each of their triggers, and yeah, this is going to add up very quickly for an absurd amount of damage. Speaking of absurd amount of damage and value and well everything, how about Nimbus at Perun? It can't be countered. It's a 5-5 flyer that says whenever you draw a card, it deals one damage to any target, and whenever a player casts an insert sorcery spell, you draw a card. There's a reason this one is legendary, and yeah, with this commander, you now can get a copy of it just for it coming into play. And now when any instant or sorcery is cast, you are drawing two cards and dishing out four damage in total. Keep in mind, that's not just your own instant sorceries, that's anyone's. And speaking of an instant, how about something like Essence Flux? Why not cast that? It's gonna exile target creature you control and turn that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Basically, a blink effect like this one can just make it so that your creature re-enters, and again, because it doesn't have that cast stipulation, you just freely get a handler token copy of it. So have fun with all of your nib misits. And don't even get me started on clone and populate cards, but yeah, for all of these reasons, Miriam, Myram, whatever your name is, you are definitely a kill on site commander. Moving on, next up we've got Anello the Painter. He is a 1-3 vampire assassin with death touch that costs blue, black, red. But more importantly, he has the first instant or sorcery spell you cast each turn has casualty too. So as you cast that spell, you may sacrifice a creature with power to a greater. When you do, you copy the spell, you may choose targets for the copy. So this is a low to the ground commander that can give you an absurd amount of value out of your spells for a very, very small price. And of course, in some instances, or many instances in these colors, there are plenty of creatures out there that actually want to be sacrificed or ways to benefit from creatures being sacrificed. So yeah. Actually, sacrificing a creature can benefit you even further. And of course, there are certain spells in these colors that you really are going to want to copy. And if you're playing against this commander, they are the reason that this is a commander that is most definitely a kill on site commander. Because once things get going with this commander, it can be very difficult, if not impossible, to stop. 
And those spells are of course extra turn spells with cards like Walk the Aeons and Temporal Mastery. Walk the Aeon says target player text an extra turn after this one, and it's got buyback, sacrifice three islands, and as you might have noticed, uh, at no point did it say, you know, this gets exiled. So this is one of those extra turn spells that you not only can get back, you know, with its actual buyback cost, but you can actually get it back as well with other means, like, you know, something that can bring an instant sorcery back from your graveyard to your hand. So with this commander, it can be quite easy to just cast this, copy it by sacrificing a creature, and then start getting it back and taking your extra turns and then actually getting it back again and casting it again and copying it again. And yeah, it can be really difficult for your opponents to ever get a turn again. Now, obviously there are a ton of extra turn spells out there and you know, one like Temporal Mastery can obviously be incredibly impactful with its miracle cost of one and a blue. This one does exile upon our resolution, but still two mana for an extra turn spell. And actually with this commander again, two mana for two extra turn spells by sacrificing a creature, that is pretty ridiculous. And then, of course, something like Jadar, Cool Caller of Nefalia, can make you a lot of creature fodder to ensure that you always have a creature to sacrifice at the beginning of your end step. If you control no creature with Decayed, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed. So with just this in play, you can just keep making those creatures that you can keep sacrificing for more extra turns. Anello is very much a kill on site commander that if you do not take out early and often, things can get out of hand and it can be incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to stop that player. One that can be incredibly hard to stop though is the Beam Town Bullies. It's a 4-4 Ogre Devil Warrior that has Vigilance and Haste, which is huge, that costs one black, red, green. It has tap target opponent whose turn it is, puts target non-legendary creature card from your graveyard on the battlefield under their control. It gains haste, goad it at the beginning of the next end step, exile it. So if you are playing against the Beam Town Bullies and you don't have instant speed removal, you might be out of luck. The Beamtown Bullies do have haste, so they can be activated right away. Now, obviously, they're not going to activate until, you know, an opponent's turn, but still. This is the kind of commander where it just takes one activation to basically take a player out of the game, and in some instances, really just take a player out of the game. Now, obviously, there are certain builds with this commander where you can just say, oh, I'm just going to get big creatures out and goad them, and that player attacks with them, but obviously, there are other builds where you have just those one-shot creatures that can essentially just take out an opponent that you're giving this to. And while it does specify non-legendary, so you know you can't utilize something like Phage with this commander to just take a player out right away, there are other creatures that can essentially just take players out of the game as well. And of course, that Beamtown Bullies player can actually just go get those creatures with something like Buried Alive, which says search alive for the three creature cards, put them into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. So for three mana, this is a triple tutor that gets those creatures exactly where that player wants them. And with a creature like Eater of Days, well, good luck to that opponent that you're giving this to. It's a 9-8 Flying Trampling Leviathan that has, when it comes into play, you skip your next two turns. So that player skips their next two turns, which is brutal, and of course that can be even more brutal if you've got a Sacrifice Outlet, so that you can just keep doing this again, and again, and again. And actually, you don't even need to do that again for that one player with something like Leveler, because this is just basically going to take a player out. It's a 10-10, and when it enters the battlefield, you exile your library. So basically, insta-exile mill. And of course, if that Beamtown Bullies player has the Sacrifice Outlet, well, they can just sacrifice this to do it to another player. So yeah, if you don't have instant speed removal, and that Beamtown Bullies player has the ability to just take you out with one creature, and they've got access to it, you're pretty much going to be gone. Definitely a kill on site commander in my books. Next up, another Streets of Nuke Vanna kill on site commander is Jetmir Nexus of Rebels. Jetmir is a 5-4 cat demon that costs one red, green, white, and it says, Creatures you control get plus one with zero and have vigilance as long as you control three or more creatures. Creatures you control also get plus one with zero and have trample as long as you control six or more creatures. And creatures you control also get plus one with zero and have double strike as long as you control nine or more creatures. Jetmir can make the tiniest creature hit incredibly hard. At its highest level, which of course is not that difficult to get to with a lot of the cards in these colors, you need nine creatures. If you've got nine creatures, and that includes Jet Mirror, that is going to be plus three, plus zero, double strike, vigilance, and trample. So even if you just say have eight one one tokens in play, they would be vigilantly swinging with four power and double strike and trample. That is 64 damage from the tiniest of tokens, and that's not even counting Jetmir's damage, which of course is an extra 16 damage. One swing can definitely be all you need with this commander. 
Again, in these colors, there are plenty of ways to make tokens very quickly. I mean, Tender Shoot Dryad's going to give you a 1 1 sapling at the beginning of each and every single upkeep. So, with every trip around the table, that's what, four saplings? And on top of that, if you've got the City's Blessing, which of course you will get to very easily, all those saplings are going to get plus two, plus two. So, those are going to be six, three, double striking, vigilantly trampling saplings that, you know, are going to be hitting basically for 12 each. And yeah, your opponents are going to get taken out very easily with that. And of course, this can even come out of nowhere with cards like Secure the Waste and Call the Copper Coats. Secure the Waste is going to give you X11 Warriors at instant speed, and Call the Copper Coats is going to give you, well, a ton of creatures based on your opponent's creatures. It has a Strive cost for one and a white, and it's going to give you a 1-1 one, one for each creature of those opponents that you picked. So if your opponents have a total of 10 creatures on the board, well, now you get 10 creatures of your own. Again, at instant speed, and of course, like I mentioned, in these colors, you've got plenty of other ways to make a ton of tokens, so Jet Mirror can become a one-shot KO for all of your opponents in absolutely no time. Definitely a kill on site target in my opinion. Speaking of which, let's talk about yet another kill on site commander, but one that takes you out in a different way as Satoru Umazawa. He's a 2-4 human ninja that says, whenever you activate an ninjutsu ability, like the top three cards of your library, put one of them in your hand and the rest of them on your library in any order. This really triggers only once each turn. Now that is nice, but the important part is each creature card in your hand has ninjutsu for two, blue, black. So basically, if you get a creature through in combat, you can then just ninjutsu in a creature from your hand for just four mana. And that creature is essentially already not blocked, and it is going to be hitting that player that it's coming through on. Which, of course, can be incredibly deadly, especially in combination with some massive creatures that you're going to be cheating a ton of mana cost on. I mean, this commander can very easily take a player out, or at the very least, take over the game as early as turn four. Or perhaps I should specify, as early as turn four, even if you're not ramping. Because if you're just playing a land each turn, you can, by the time turn four comes around, get an absurd creature into play. And of course, if you ramped, you can do that even quicker. So maybe on turn one, play Slitherblade. Again, that's an unblockable creature, and there are plenty of those that are either unblockable or have some fantastic forms of evasion in these colors. Then just even just take turn two off if you really want to. Play a land, take it off. Turn three, play your commander. Turn four, play a land. Swing with Silver Blade, get through, and then, you know, maybe just plop down Jinga Taxia, Scrogger. And then good luck to your opponents ever trying to recover from that. Again, on turn four without ramp. A 5-4 flashy prayer that says the beginning of your end step, draw seven cards. Each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by seven. So essentially, you draw a ton of cards and your opponents have no hands. So yeah, there's a reason why this costs 10 mana. And yeah, with this commander, you can cheat it in for just four. And you can save even more mana on Blightsteel Colossus, which usually costs 12. So again, a savings of eight mana. And yeah, there's a reason this costs 12 mana and 11-11 with Trample, Infect, and Indestructible. Which, keep in mind, it doesn't even need that trample on that first hit because it already got through in combat thanks to ninjutsuing it in with Slitherblade or, or, you know, whatever, you know, unblockable creature you have that already got through. So yeah, Satoru Umazawa is most definitely a commander that can very easily and very quickly one-shot a player in no time, so it's definitely a kill on sight target. Next up, also from Kamigawa, how about Ishin Two Heavens as one? It's a 3-4 human samurai that says if a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So whereas Yark is essentially a Panharmonicon commander doubling up BTBs and Tesa Karlov is a Death Harmonicon commander doubling up death triggers, this is an Attack Harmonicon commander. And it doesn't just impact when your own creatures are attacking, but when your opponent's creatures attack as well. If you've got attack triggers from those, great, you get them twice. And doubling up attack triggers can be an absurd amount of value, and this can get out of hand in absolutely no time. I mean, just as one example, with one creature with an attack trigger like a Tali Primal Storm, just swinging once with this with issue in play can be game ending. It has, when it attacks, exile the top card of each player's library, then you may cast any number of spells from among those cards without paying their mana cost. So normally, that's still an absurd amount of value, casting up to four things for free, but now with this commander, that's eight. And yeah, that's just one attack trigger from one creature. And on top of that, of course, in these colors, you've got access to some extra combat spells like Relentless Assault, which lets you just do it again. Untap all creatures that attack this turn, at this main phase, additional combat phase, spell additional main phase. Basically, hey, you get an extra combat. So swing again and double up your attack triggers again. Just think about that in combination with the Tali and your commander. That is, what, 16 potentially free cards cast off the top of libraries? Yeah. That, that's pretty incredible. 
What's also incredible again is that this commander doubles up on attack triggers from your opponent's creatures attacking as well. So for example, something like Revenge of Ravens, if a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, that creature controller loses one life and you gain one life. That itself is already a good attack deterrent, but now with this in combination with your commander, that's going to be two life lost and two life gained for each one of your opponent's creatures that attack you. The amount of value that Ishin can generate cannot be denied, and yeah, this is most definitely a kill on sight target that you do not want to let get going. Moving on, yet another commander from Kamigawa, let's talk about Hinata Dawn Crown. It's a 4-4 Flampling Kirin Spirit that costs 1 blue, red, white, and it says spells you cast cost 1 less to cast for each target, and spells your opponent's cast cost 1 more to cast for each target. So, first off, that last line can just decimate certain cards and make them basically uncastable for your opponents. If they've got multiple targets for that spell, it's going to make them cost a ton. But even just at a base level, any kind of a targeted removal that targets your things, including your commander, now costs at least one more, so good luck to your opponents trying to target your things while losing out on a ton of mana. But of course, that cost reduction is what really makes this commander incredibly deadly. It can do some pretty game-breaking things basically right away. The more targets that a spell has, the better. For example, how about a spell like Heliod's Intervention, which is going to let you destroy X target artifacts and or enchantments for X white white. Essentially, you can target every single artifact and enchantment on the board that you want to, and most of the times that's going to be your opponent's artifacts and enchantments. With Hanana, that X cost is essentially covered for you, so you just have to pay white white 2 mana in total at infant speed to wipe out every single artifact and enchantment that is not yours. And speaking of wiping things out, how about Distortion Wake, which says, return X target non-land permanents to their owner's hands for X blue blue blue. This is essentially a sorcery speed cyclonic rift for just 3 mana. It's a one-sided board wipe that normally would cost a ton of mana, but again with that cost reduction thanks to Hanada, it costs only 3 mana to target whatever you want. Now of course this also works on non-X spells, you know, like a massive spell like Soulfire Eruption, which costs 6 red red red, but you know, this is basically just going to cost you red 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 to cast. It says choose any number of target creatures, planeswalkers, and or players for each of them, exile the top card of your library, then Soulfire Eruption deals damage equal to that card's converting mana cost to that permanent or player. You may play the exile cards until the end of your next turn. So basically, ping a lot of things for a random amount of damage, which obviously can be a ton of damage, you know, when you've got other spells like Soulfire Eruption in the deck that have a massive converted mana cost, and also a fire option on top of that damage you're also getting access to all those cards that you're revealing so yeah Hinata is definitely the kind of commander that needs to be taken off the board right away and even then when you try to do so it might already be too late Next up, let's move on to Jenga Taxius Progress Tyrant, a 5 5 Phyrexian Praetor that costs 5 blue blue. It says whenever you cast an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, copy that spell. You may choose targets for the copy. This ability triggers only once each turn. And of course, a copy of a permanent spell becomes a token. And on top of all of this, though, whenever an opponent casts an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, counter that spell. This ability triggers only once each turn. This is an absolutely brutal commander that definitely lives up to the name of a Phyrexian Praetor. Not only does it double up your spells, but it can throw a major wrench in your opponent's plans because they essentially are going to have to cast multiple spells to try to get what they want through, at least when it comes to artifacts, instants, and sorceries. So, in a way, Jingataxius kind of protects itself because a lot of the ways that they're removing it are going to be based on instants and sorceries, which they have to cast two to actually get through. On top of that, it's going to be incredibly difficult for them to counter what you are doing as well. So yeah, this shuts down what your opponents want to try to do to stop you, and on top of that, it doubles up your things as well. And you can get even more value out of doubling things with something like Twinning Staff, which says if you would copy a spell one more time and said copy it that many times plus additional time, you may choose the targets for the additional copy. So have fun getting an extra copy of this when you cast it, and then whenever you copy anything, you are getting additional copies for each of the Twinning Staffs too. Which, of course, with all this copying, you can definitely utilize cards like Time Warp or, you know, any other extra turn spell, really. Target player takes extra turn after this one. If this is the first artifact, insert, or sorcery that you're casting in your turn, you're getting two copies of it, which means you get two extra turns. And, of course, with a spell like this, this one does not exile specifically, so, yeah, you can just go get that back with Call to Mind. Which says return target, insert, or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand, and if that's actually the first spell that you cast in that extra turn... Well, then you can, you know, just get Time Warp back, and then, you know, it's maybe something else that also gets other spells back, you know, which also copies. So then you can just keep doing this in a loop again and again 
and again. So obviously commanders that can use and abuse extra turn spells by making extra copies of them can be incredibly powerful, especially one that also can make other copies of artifacts that can help you with your plan in other ways or help you shut down your opponents. And yeah, this commander is just brutal in many ways and very effective. And if you can try to take it out as quickly as you can. Yet another commander that is definitely a kill on site commander in my opinion is Vadric Astral Archmage. He's a 1-2 human wizard for one blue red that says if it's neither day nor night it becomes day as Vadric enters the battlefield. And instant sorcery spells you cast cost X less to cast for X is Vadric's power. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day put a plus one counter on Vadric. Now getting counters on Vadric like this is nice but it's really not all that necessary it's just kind of a nice additional benefit. Because again, Vandrick's cost reduction doesn't care about the number of counters on it, it cares about power. And of course, there are plenty of ways to pump this commander incredibly quickly to get an absurd amount of cost reduction on all of your instants and sorceries, and you can do some really crazy things with that. So even a simple equipment like Black Blade or Forge, which is going to give a quick creature plus plus one for each land you control, can be effective with this commander. Because when you pump your commander by, say, even just five with this, that makes a massive difference, making it so your commander reduces the cost of your instant sorceries by six. And then, of course, there are a good amount of spells out there like Lunar Frenzy, which can essentially just double up your commander's power. It costs X and a red, and it says star creature you control gets plus X plus zero gains first strike and trample until end of turn. So with this, you can basically just pay a single red, because this is reduced by your commander's power, to double up your commander's power. And say you had, you know, two of these types of spells, you can do that twice with another Black Blade or Forge, you can very quickly get to absurd amounts of cost reduction. And of course, even with just that base level example that I gave with even just five lands in play for Black Blade or Forge, that's plus five plus five to get your commander to six power, doubling up with Lunar Frenzy to 12, doubling it again with something else to maybe 24, and then maybe cast of like Finale Revelation. So then for two mana, you are drawing 24 cards, and yeah, X is going to be 10 or more, obviously. Shuffle your graveyard in your library, draw X cards, untap it to five lands, and you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Exile off Finale Revelation. So, of course, from there, you know, you probably have other ways to, you know, double up your commander's power again, maybe dish out a ton of damage, draw even more cards, etc, etc, etc. Yeah, Vadric gets out of hand very quickly and is definitely a kill on site commander. <laughs> But the final kill on site commander that I'm going to bring up today is Toxrill the Corrosive. Toxrill is a 7-7 slug horror that costs 5 black black. It says the beginning of each end set put a slime counter on each creature you don't control. Creatures you don't control get minus 1 minus 1 for each slime counter on them. Whenever a creature you don't control a slime counter on it dies creating 1-1 one, one black slug creature token. And on top of that, by paying blue black you sacrifice a slug to draw a card. Toxrill counts every single end step. So every single end step, every single creature you don't control gets a slime counter on them. And for each of those counters, those creatures get smaller. So with just one trip around the table, that is four slime counters and all those creatures get minus four, minus four. And when those creatures die, which of course they will eventually, because yeah, that's gonna be a ton of slime counters very quickly, you get slug tokens, which you could of course sacrifice for card advantage. And even if Toxrill is dealt with, again, those slime counters are staying on the creatures that actually survive. When you get Toxrill back out, it picks up right where it left off. Those creatures shrink again based on the number of their slime counters and you keep adding more and more counters to them. So yeah, this is a commander that has to be dealt with right away or your creatures aren't gonna last very long at all. And when they don't last, then that opponent also gets in a massive you know, slime army too. And of course, in these colors, you've got ways to get even more slime counters on them very quickly with cards like Flux Channeler, which says when you cast a non-creature spell, proliferate. So by utilizing proliferate effects like this one, you can just keep getting more and more slime counters on those creatures to take them out even quicker. Or you can essentially take every single creature out that a player has with something as simple as Mass Diminish. It says until your next turn, creature's target player controls that base power and toughness, 1-1, one, one, and you can flash it back. So by making your opponent's creatures into 1-1s, one well, only one slime counter is needed to take them out. In an even better way, there's Sludge Monster, which says when it enters battlefield or attacks with a slime counter on up to one other target creature, and more importantly, non-horror creatures with slime counters on them lose all abilities and have base power and toughness 2-2. Two, two. Basically, it only takes two slime counters to take out all of your opponent's creatures, and even if they just have one slime counter on them, they are basically, you know, useless as just a 1-1. One, one. You know, they would be a 2-2 two, two with no abilities, but, you know, minus one because of those slime counters. So they're just a 1-1 one, one with nothing. That, of course, will be taken out the second it gets a second slime counter on them. So yeah, Toxrill, definitely a kill on sight commander. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.
This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.